I have a very simple question. Today is a Google release day. Today, Gemini is coming out. Are we all chat GPT pilled or is Gemini actually not as useful as it looks like on paper? Because I'm going to go through, I'm going to tell you about the Gemini 2.0 model release, right? Like there's multiple things that came out. If you think that OpenAI had a problem with naming, wait till you see how Google is doing naming. First, they're introducing Google Gemini 2.0 Flash. It's high frequency model. It's usable at scale. It has a context window of a million tokens, and it's now generally available. It tests very well. Anecdotally, I will tell you that developers, by and large, most of the developers I talk to, do not think it is as good as Claude, even though the context window is much larger. Then they're also introducing 2.0 Pro Experimental, our best model yet for coding performance, they say. Um, and again, it tests very well. Now it has a context window of 2 million tokens. I believe it's available in Vertex now. And finally, they're introducing 2.0 Flash Lite. Uh, and so they're trying to get something that is very fast, very cheap to produce, and able to work with you in Google AI Studio and Vertex AI. I'm going to link to all of this. You don't have to remember all of it. You'll see the test results. Here's the larger point. Those are three different models. I can't tell you, even more than OpenAI, I cannot tell you what is the meaningful difference between those models. And even Google, when they're writing about it, it isn't clear. They talk about how good 2.0 Flash is for developers, and then they say, but 2.0 Pro Experimental, even better for developers. Okay, maybe it is, but you got to get clear on the product and packaging. And I'm not saying this because Google's alone on this. A lot of the model makers are struggling with the packaging here. It's just coming up with Google. And it is part of what is prompting me to ask, is the packaging the issue for Google? Or is it the model itself that isn't working? And what's interesting is with OpenAI, everyone agrees the packaging is the issue. Like the packaging is clearly a problem. There's also been a lot of pushback since DeepSeek on the fact that it's not open source. But with Google, yes, the packaging is the issue. But in addition, I hear a lot of anecdotal evidence, and I've seen it myself when I'm using it, that these models don't perform in real world query scenarios as well as they test. And so you can ask them something. And I've actually included Gemini in some of my asks, like when I've been doing tests on queries, Gemini is one of the models I go to. And what I see is that it's not as thoughtful it tends to infer less and infer more shallowly. And I've been using 2.0. And I, I don't know what to say. It's very difficult to assess real world performance of models right now. This is not a Google only challenge. We need a better set of evals uh, or evaluations that help us to assess models more clearly. So that's where I am. I think my question to you is, is Google actually as good as it tests? Is Google not performing in real world scenarios as well as they claim? And if that's the case, is it worth following Google? Or is, is this like enough of a string of ships where we think Google is actually having difficulty shipping core models, even if they've done a great job on other things? Like I would argue with you that Notebook LM is a great product, straight up. They've done a phenomenal job there. Is that where we're seeing progress from Google is in the UI and some of these side products and not in the core models? That would be a really odd scenario. What do you think?